Hi everyone, and I'm here with um, Steve at the Proper Job, and we're uh, we're at um, at your restaurant, the Proper Job. Yeah. And this is one of the coolest um, bars, um, restaurants um, in in Bangkok. It, it might actually be the the, the coolest. Um, so, so, um, so, so Steve's from Steve's from England. Um, he's um, he's been he's been in Bangkok for quite a while. So, so I wanted to interview him. Um, anything, any introduction or anything to say about yourself? No, just uh, you've covered it, Joseph. Uh, yeah, I'm the bar owner of a bar called Proper Job, which is in Ratchetha, Soy 3, uh, which is in the Dindeng district of Bangkok, about probably about three kilometres from what people would know as the main tourist area, sunk of it, uh, and a sunk. But yeah, you've given me a nice introduction, thank you for that. Okay. Yeah, and and um, and so it was. Um, you you bought the you bought the bar recently, right? Yeah, we've had the bar. Uh, me and my partner bought the bar about uh, four months ago. Uh -huh. uh, I was a regular customer at the bar, and uh, the old owner, he nice guy named Rob, and his wife, they wanted to move to Chiang Rai and retire. So he he asked me. He said, "Look, I think." You could be a good guy to run the bar. I've had it for 10 years. I wanted to keep going. You know, he was the guy who come up with the name Proper Job. Uh -huh. So he said, I think you and your partner, your girlfriend, I think you're good people. And would you like to have buy the bar from me? At first I said, no, I don't want to have a bar. I've got a, <laughs> I've got, I've got a normal job. I don't need the hassle of a bar. But my girlfriend wasn't working and to ties, it's a very big uh, pride thing that they have their own business. So I ask her, I say, you think you can make make it work, the bar and the restaurant? And she say, yes, I think so. I say, okay, we do it. It was not a lot of money in the terms of things compared to what you pay in other countries. Mm -hmm. uh, and your running costs are quite low compared to bars in other countries. So I said, okay, I, I think, why not? We'll give it a go. I always like to see myself as a bar owner. I like to talk to people. I like to I like to go to bars a lot and drink. So it's you know it suits my purpose to have a bar and uh, I, I enjoy owning the bar. You know it, it's difficult. We're having a day job too. Sometimes it's it can be a lot of work, but it's enjoyable. Cool. And and is this your first bar that you own? Yes, it is. Yes. Okay. That's. Um that's really uh, that's really cool. So so the the name proper job because uh, it was called proper job before, right? Yeah, we t we we often change the name. So we and, and 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 that's one of my questions because because yeah. um, if it were me, I would call it Joseph's um, Joseph's Bar. Like, uh, like 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 that would be the first thing to go. Is yeah. It, but but it's a it, um, it's a cool name. So so how come you didn't call it um, Steve's Place or? Well, if well, for two reasons. Uh, one of the one of the main reasons we bought the bar is we like the clientele. You know, it's a bar that has a lot of regulars. We probably about seventy-five percent regular people who come all the time. I'm um, probably about twenty-five percent what I could say walk-ins, tourists, and tires who just walk past the place and mm -hmm. come in and have a drink. Uh, so, if I change the name to Steve's, people go, "What Steve's? Where is it? Who, who is Steve?" <laughs> So it made more business sense to leave it as a proper job. But also, I had quite like the name. I like the story. In English, proper job means you've, it's a proper job. Plus, it gives me a nice... A, a proper job, like, like well done? You get like you've done a proper job. You've okay. done a good job, well done. Yeah, that's exactly what, what it means. Also, it's a good segue for me when I talk to people. So new people who come in, uh, they'll say to me, oh, how long you had the bar? And I talk, and I say, well, I also have a proper job bar but I have a proper job too <laughs> I'm an IT architect so even that's a nice segue into saying introducing yourself to people who are who, who we get a lot of people who who as the Thai term Farang come in here uh, and they don't they stay in this area just because it's a bit cheaper than some of it they don't know anything about the area mm -hmm. but when you say to them well you're very close to this and you the, the MRT is here and uh, they, they really love it and they come back to the bar they really like we're really the only Farang bar in the street. There is like a Tex-Mex place and that, but we're the only one that caters. No one serves the amount of beer that we serve and no one does the range of food that we do. Mm -hmm. The other bars are very nice, you know, and I don't mind. People say, oh, what if another bar opened in the street? I, well, I wouldn't mind. The more bars you have in the street, more people it brings to the, the area, more generally you could get more custom. 
So mm -hmm. I've never seen it as competition or anything else. Uh, and, and, and that's really interesting because that's a uh, that's something I noticed that's really different about like American culture and Thai and, and, and like Asian culture. And especially like when I, when I was in Hong Kong, there's um, there was one street that was just like fish and fish tanks. Yeah. Uh, like like every single store on the street was fish and fish yeah. tanks. And then like like in the U.S., you'd never have like two aquarium shops oh, yeah. at, at, at even like one giant mall. Well, in the U.K., they do have regulations where you can't have like it's more to do with shops than bars, but you can't have like if you have a green grocery shop selling vegetables. They wouldn't allow somebody next door to open up. Uh -huh. If the council would say no, you cannot do it. Hey, it doesn't matter. If someone wants to open up a next door as a bar, I call it a proper job too. And they, <laughs> uh, there's nothing I could do about it. I'd be very upset, but there's nothing I could do about it. Uh, so it's very rare. The only time we've had a clash is uh, in Thailand when you own a shop, especially the shop front. You can they, they sublet the shop front. So as you've seen next door, there's a lady with a sewing machine. Uh -huh. So she pays not much to the pharmacy next door, so she can work through the sewing machine. Her customers know where she is. One time they did allow a guy who was selling some Thai food, just a bit of papaya salad, not a major, but he was cooking like at the barbecue. We had to say to him, no, you can cannot do that. We had uh -huh. to get the landlord involved because one, it was affecting our customers to smoke, but two, we sell the food here. Uh -huh. You know, if you want, to, you want to sell food further down, even 20 metres, 30 metres away, fine. But don't do it outside our place, because people think <laughs> you're affiliated to the proper job. Uh -huh. and you're not. So that's the only time you have to really step in. Other than that, no, anything goes in Asia. It's not just Thailand, anywhere in Asia, right? like you said before, Hong Kong, Malaysia. They, they could have literally a whole, whole street. It's like when I lived in Singapore for three years, mm -hmm. and where I lived was a place called Ballastair Road. And Ballastair Road in Singapore is very famous for lights, lighting, ceiling lighting and lighting. So you have maybe 40, 50 shops along Ballastair Road all sell lights or mm -hmm. lamps or things. So it's it's not uncommon in, in Asia just to have one certain area that just sells all these things. Huh, that's uh, that's cool. And I, and I like your vision for the street, um, like a, a street of a whole bunch of bars. Oh, well, I think more bars in the street will be fine, as long as they're the right, right type of bars, I've got no issue with it. Uh, you know, because it brings more people to the street. And, you know, pe people, certainly for Angs, are, we've got a lot of regulars who do like just sit, sitting in there, to be fair. They mm -hmm. come here and they stay here all night. Fine. They're the type of customer we really like. <laughs> but you do have some of them that, like, they come in, they'll do two or three beers, but then they'll want to go to another bar, which that's fine also. Mm -hmm. But you'd rather keep them in the area here than they go, OK, well, I'm going to go to Sukhavit or Victory Monument or I'm going to go to the Laugh mm -hmm. for a drink. You'd rather keep them in the area. So, OK, they go to another bar, two to drink. You know what, I'm going to go back to proper job, things like that. So very much in European culture, that's the way they like to do it. So yeah, for me, more bars opening up in the area would be absolutely no problem at all. Cool, cool. And have you eaten at the Mexican restaurant? I have. He's a friend of ours. So, and we sent people down to him. I actually, he, he always laughs. I was actually his customer before I was a customer here. Uh -uh. So he's a real nice guy. He's an Indian Thai named uh, Guru. And uh, he makes great Tex-Mex food. So Wait, uh, yeah, I um, I saw him, I saw him in here the other day. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're friends. We we don't see each other's competition or anything. I send people to him. He sends people here. Uh, he likes to come. He normally shuts earlier than us, so he'll like to come in here and have a drink. About uh, unfortunately, I'm on a diet at the moment, so I'm avoiding <laughs> Tex-Mex. But I normally go to eat to his once a week. Normally, uh, go in and have something to eat after I finish work and a drink. And uh, yeah, yeah, we're, we're friendly about it, yeah. So, but like you say, I was his customer first, so he says, oh, you buy the proper job, but you were my customer first. It's the way it is. Yeah, and so, um, so it's, um, it's interesting that, uh, well, his, um, his kitchen closes pretty early, and, and that's... Uh, he, he closes earlier, yeah, he op but he opens earlier too. Uh, uh, so, and, and I, usually, um, I usually get off work um, pretty late, cause, um, but, but I, I work really close to here, so yeah. it's within walking distance. So, so so many so many times I've been I've I've thought oh maybe maybe his kitchen is uh, is open I go over there and he's like ah oh, sorry we just we, we just closed the kitchen 30 yeah minutes, thirty minutes ago yeah so, so so I've only I've only actually eaten there um, I've only actually eaten there once but his Mexican food is awesome yeah yeah I mean like say the Tex Mex food's there I, I I like a bit of Tex Mex now and again and he does does good food and he does deals and things so that's that's how I got to know the site. 
by going to his restaurant. To be fair, huh, huh, yeah. that's um, that's cool. Yeah, and, and actually, I think the um, the first time the first time I came here was maybe like five years ago. Uh, one of my first trips to Bangkok because yeah. I was uh, I was staying at the Centric uh, for like a month. Yeah, yeah. Um, and um, and and just like walking around and um, saw um, saw this bar and was like, oh, that's, that's kind of cool. Yeah, well, so, I- um, so 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 you mentioned that you wanted to keep like the spirit of the place. And yes. Like, like a lot of the stuff's really really similar to when I first came here, which uh, uh, which is really cool. Yeah, well, basically, like I say, we like the bar the way it is. People mm-hmm. do come and say change, as you said, change the name, change this, change that. <laughs> so we've done some, we've increased the menu. There's, there's extra things on the menu, so which we want to do. And we want to increase the menu more. We want to do more Western food, uh, maybe get into like the English breakfast and things like that. Because we think there is a lot of Farangs in this area. It's surprising how many are in this area, and we think... There's a, there's a bit of a market, even on food delivery, to, to maybe do that. Mm-hmm. So we want to do more. Certainly what, what we have improved on is the, um, the selection of beers you can get here. Uh, the old owners, they did four beers, which was the three local beers, Chang, Leo, Singer, and they did Heineken as the European beer. And they did, they did a certain amount of spirits. So we've increased, we've in- certainly increased the beer. You can buy all beers here. The San Miguel in particular, uh, it's been very popular since we've introduced that. It's been very popular, and we and we sell a lot of it. Yeah, we, oh, um, yeah, and and I wanted to um, I wanted to ask about that because um, a lot of stores have San Miguel Light, but but you have two San Miguel's, um, the San Miguel Pilsner and then San Miguel Light. Yeah, well, it's the Pilsner um, that's selling well. I mean, in most holiday places, you'll get small bottles of San Miguel Light, uh-huh. but we do small and big bottles of San Miguel Light, which are very popular. Uh, but the the normal San Miguel Pilsner. Which you don't seem to get in many places in town. Oh, I don't oh, yeah, know why. Uh, yeah, I think um, I was mentioning to somebody that uh, this is the only place, I, and I've been in I've been in Thailand for like three or four yeah. years now. This is the only place I've ever seen San Miguel Pilsner. Well, well besides in um, in in Philippines. I've well, seen well, it, from the Philippines, <laughs> isn't it? So no surprise there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, but, um, so 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 it's re- so it's really cool to see um, to see it over here. Yeah. Um, well, well, it's really popular. It's so, re- so really it was, popular. Was it hard to find or how? It, well, well, the supermarket sold it. So initially, we were just running in the supermarket and getting what we could off the shelf. Uh-huh. Because we tried it to see if it, if it worked, but we actually got a bit lucky. Uh, in my day job. A guy I work with, uh, he come in and he went, have you got San Miguel? I said, yeah, we have. I said, but it's, we're running low because basically we run into any supermarket <laughs> and buy, take what off the shelf. And normally it's about eight bottles at a time. So every day, either myself or my partner, Ning, we'd be going to, going to the shop and taking it. Then he said, well, my best friend is the sales rep for San Miguel in Bangkok. Oh, wow. And we went, okay, let's get in touch. <laughs> so now we have no problems with supply at all. And they also supplied cider. So we started doing Magnus cider as well. Mm-hmm. So now cider's more expensive, but now and again, people, they like a bit of cider. Mm-hmm. So we've, we've been selling a bit of that. Basic, basically, Joseph, my, my theory to a bar is, I, I've drank in a lot of bars in my time, and I still do. I, I like to go for a drink. I, I, I like bar life. Mm-hmm. So my theory is, I want this bar to be somewhere where I'd like to drink. I'd like to go and frequent a lot. And the more selection of beer you have, the better it is for the customer. So even if it's a high-end beer that costs maybe 300 bar for a small bottle, if people are going to buy it every now and again, we'll get it in. We'll get it in. We want to give people what they want. Mm-hmm. So, um, so one of the uh, one of the really interesting things is like a lot of uh, a lot of bars, and then especially in in Thailand, um, Thai, um, Thai people are really scared of talking to other people, uh, like, like especially um, especially new people, or or, 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 or can be. And um, and every time I've um, every time I've been in been in here, three or four people, um, you, your wife, and like usually one or two customers, like, hey, hey, how are you? Um, so so like this, um, one of the really significant things about this place is how like friendly people are. So um, so, yeah. so 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 um, is that something you like made a conscious effort to do, or are you just a friendly guy, or, or um, bit of um, both? Bit of both. I mean, there's always, obviously there's times when I'm tired of the day and I don't want to make small talk with people and that. But when, So if you were just a customer, you could just basically, hello, and drink by yourself or that. So sometimes, being the owner, I do have to make an extra effort. Well, it's not much of an effort, and I am generally 
I like to socialise, I like to meet new people. I have no issues myself going anywhere in the world and drinking by myself, because I always think, I'll meet somebody to talk to. Mm-hmm. And this is the type of bar we want here. Because, you know, sometimes we've had, a, we've, we've had a lot of people in here. It's the first time in Bangkok. Not everyone. The, the, I think there's a bit of a myth that everyone who's in Bangkok has been here many times before and knows it. No, I mean, we had a, guy, we had a German guy in the other night. He knew nothing about Bangkok. All, all he knew, he, he booked a hotel around the corner. But he knew he wanted to go and, you know, let's be fair, he wanted to go and have a party somewhere. So we seen the bar and he go, oh, I don't know. And I said, well, you know, Soy Cowboy, motorbike taxi, you'll be there five minutes. He went, really? I went, yeah, he went, I not realised so close, I thought I was very far away. I went, no, you'll be there five minutes, it's not a problem. Great, if he, if he not speak to me, if he not know talk to me or anything else, you not know that. Maybe he'd be walking around to this day, not know where he <laughs> want to go or anything. So, you know, we want to be helpful to people. It's even down to, like, if people need a hotel, we'll go around and talk to the hotel. Because mm-hmm. we want to help. I mean, also, we get a benefit. If people are staying locally, they'll come to the bar a bit more, you know. But mm-hmm. our customers we, our customers become our friends. If they, we, All I ever say to people when they come in, be respectful to the bar, be respectful to the staff, and be respectful to the customers. You do them three things, you're going to have a good time here. We're going to like you. So our customers become friends and we help them. With various things, even we, we've got a customer, he's very good friends with Ning, a Norwegian guy. He says, Steve, I, need, I want to stay in Bangkok, I, want, I look for work. I say, give me your CV, give me your CV, I'll see if I can help you. You know, we ha- we're happy to help, we're happy to help, the, help people. Our customers become our friends. I know people might say, that's a cliche. It's true, because if I didn't want anyone I didn't like in the bar, it's my bar. They'll go. <laughs> they won't be friends anymore. They will leave. You know, it's a very simple. So do you have to kick people out very often? or Not often. We've had, uh, since I've been here, uh, we've had one guy. And he come back and apologised to me first. So I said, well, give it two, three weeks. You can come back in. I still see him around. And I say hello. We're friendly with each other. He know he did wrong. Uh-huh. Uh, but, you know, we've not got physical or anything like that. But I, t- I told him, give it two, three weeks and you can come back. I said, but cool down, maybe have a look at what you're doing with your life. <laughs> so, mainly, he, he not caused a problem with any other customers. He, he caused a problem with his girlfriend in the bar. Uh, you know, uh. she caused a problem too. So, it was just, just disrespectful to the bar. The other customers didn't like it. They, mm-hmm. You're fighting with your girlfriend. And, you know, and, you know. so I had to say to him, no, you need two or three weeks, cool down. So, I not, I not bar him. Mm-hmm. I not say you can never come back. I say to him, but he hasn't come back. But I've seen him now and again. He lives not far from here, and I see him when I walk to work. Or we still say hello. We're still friendly with each other. It's no big issue. Cool. So, um, so you you have a pretty giant giant menu. It's um, it, if I remember right, it's about like 80 percent Thai food, twenty uh, percent Western food at the moment. Uh, yes, because uh, you have like hamburgers. Yeah, steak, we, yeah, or, we, um, pork chops. We, um, we make. Basically, we make our own hamburgers, uh-huh. so we don't buy the hamburgers in. We make them from scratch. Uh, no, we do. We do the Frankfurt fish and chips, burger and chips. Uh, we'll do fried chicken. Yeah, we'll do. We'll do a lot, and we want to expand on the western side of the food because uh-huh. uh, we think definitely think there's a bit more of a market here for it. But the Thai food, yeah, there's not much we don't make Thai wise. Probably the only thing we don't have regular, but we have nights now and again. It's massive man. Because our kitchen's not so big. When you make a massive man curry, it has to be in a pot for a long time and it takes a long time to make. So that means you have the pot there and you have to sell a lot of it, uh-huh. otherwise it goes to waste. If we had a bit of a bigger kitchen, maybe you know we'd do we'd put massive man more on the menu. But we do like massive man and our customers like massive man. So <laughs> about once every two months we'll have a massive man night where we'll make a big massive man on the customers. We don't charge people for the massive man, we just make it because we like it too. Oh wow, yeah, um, that's uh, like in the, um, I think in the Thai restaurants in in Utah where I'm from, yeah. uh, that's probably the top selling Thai food. Is yeah, it's it's, got, it's like a say, but you've got to have a big kitchen. It's got to be pre pre made and kept warm and everything else. So, it, it, it's it, with the size of our kitchen, it's it, it would be difficult just to have one pot there all the time. Mm-hmm. Hey, if everyone come in and bought mushroom, it's worth doing. <laughs> but you never know. So, because. Because of our, our menu is varied, one night we'll get, like, we've, we've got an American guy who comes in, just started coming in regular now. One night he'll eat all Thai food. Mm-hmm. Next next night he's going to have 
English food, Frank food, mm -hmm. you know, because we give them that we give them that ability to do it, which is great. But obviously, we can't fill up a kitchen with one big pot of something, uh, you know. But if we can, we're going to put Masherman on the menu. But I'd say that's the basically the only Thai food we don't have on the menu. Huh? Yeah, yeah. You have a lot of you have a lot of different um, Thai food. So, so what's your favorite um, Thai food? Uh, my personal favorite is. Uh, and it's a, it's a, one of our signature dishes. It's called Pad Kapow Kai, which in English is basically chicken with Thai basil. Uh -huh. uh, and I, I particularly like that. It's done in a particular sauce. And I, I like it quite good with spicy. So uh -huh. all they say in Thailand, pet mak mak. Uh, so I quite like it spicy. So uh, that's probably my favourite. Uh, some places do, and I quite like it when I eat in other places. Uh, they do a pad Krapau guy pizza, and that's ooh, ooh, oh. very nice. Huh, I, I haven't tried that, I'll have to. Oh, definitely. There's, it's more places in Sunk of it that do, uh -huh. but it's very, very nice. So, so very nice. But yes, it's. Uh, but I, I like Thai food in general. I don't eat seafood because I have a small allergy to it. Mm -hmm. So, which is a shame because I like the taste of some seafood, but I just avoid seafood. Uh, but generally, also, I like lab mu, uh -huh. which is like spicy pork, mm -hmm. meatballs. Uh, I quite like them, but they're very fattening, very fattening. But they're nice, and this, I like the spiciness with the meatballs. Very nice. Yeah, that's um, that's one of the that's one of the most delicious um, um, spices. And yeah, and in uh, with a with a British accent, um, uh, with a Brit it's usually spelled L A R B. Yeah. And then with a, um, I'm I'm kind of jealous of British people because. Um, I think it's a lot easier to learn Thai if you're British because, like, like L A R B is pronounced la, uh, yeah. which is which is pretty much exactly the way the Thai Thai people yeah, say it. Yeah. And um, and but but then an American reading L A R B, they would say larb. Yeah. And uh, which is completely um, completely wrong. And and actually, even on like Spider Man, uh, on Spider Man, um, they um, they were talking about. Um, Lob, but they called it larb, yeah. and and they're making a bunch of jokes like like Spider Man says to his mom, "I larb you," uh, <laughs> like uh, instead of like "I love you." Yeah. Um, so, so, um, so, so yeah, uh, Americans don't know how to pronounce it, and and then um, L A R B like looks like uh, at first I thought it was made out of lard. Yeah. Um, because uh, because um, but 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 yeah, it's um, it's it's interesting because it's one of the. Most delicious, yeah. um, mo most delicious like flavorings and. and yeah. I don't actually. Uh, I've got to profess my ig profess my ignorance here. I don't actually know what lab translates to in English. I know moo is poor, uh -huh. but lab. I'm not sure. Sometimes it's the way it's cooked. Uh -huh. You know. So it's like someone said to me. Well, they thought pad Thai was noodles, and I said no. Pad is the meaning of the way it's cooked. Mm -hmm. So basically, it's cooked in a wok with certain certain spices in. That's mm -hmm. the pad bit. Uh, but I'm not too sure what lab is. Maybe it is spicy or something. I don't know. I know how to ask for it though, and it's a, it's a very it's a very nice dish. And then what uh, what else uh, what else do you like um, Thai food? Well, I pad Thai. I like. I, I'm a big noodles fan. So uh -huh. so uh, you know and what I do like about Thailand is they do a lot of duck. So I, I do like duck or pet as they say in Thailand, uh -huh. and uh, duck is very nice. So if I can get a good duck noodle somewhere. Uh, so, ped, ped guai tiao or guai tiao ped depends. Guai tiao is a uh, noodle. Mm -hmm. If I can get if I can get ped guai tiao somewhere, I, I'll always try that. Yeah, I like duck. So, and they have um, they have a lot of they have a lot of shops. Uh, uh, those like duck noodle shops. Oh yeah. Uh, where, uh, where's your Where's your favorite one? Well, generally it's it's I work in a place called G Tower. Okay. And there's one below there. It's a, it's a, it's in a Thai name, so I don't know what it would translate to English, but it's on the basement of the G Tower. Okay. So I'll go there. I, I go there about once, once every two weeks or so, and get some duck noodle there. Cool. But uh, we would like to do duck in here more, but it's it's basically it's a it's a difficult meat to keep fresh uh -huh. all the time. Mm -hmm. So it w it probably cost us money if we got duck all the time. But over Christmas we're gonna. You know, we'll, we'll get a duck. Definitely. <laughs> oh yeah, and and what are you? Um, you mentioned about like having Christmas plans. Um, what? Yeah. Um, what, what, well, are the, what are what, the Christmas plans? What, for what we're job? doing the bar? We're open all over Christmas because uh, we're 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 a bar and restaurant, but we're heavily into showing our sport. I love football, English mm -hmm. football. I'm a big Liverpool supporter, so English football is on all over Christmas. There's lots and lots of games. 
So we will have the bar open all over Christmas and the, and the new year. Uh, and what we'll do Christmas night is we will lay on a Thai buffet, uh -huh. uh, which will have some Western food in, but we'll lay on a Thai buffet. And that, that will come out of our money. We, that'll just say thank you for our customers for Christmas. Uh, so we, we will have an, we'll be having a buffet at Christmas, and I hope everyone comes along, and yourself included. Oh, of course, yeah. thanks. So um, one of the um, one of one of the really interesting things about you, and and how and how I met you, because I was um, I was I, I was at the place down the street, yeah. and um, so, something that I always uh, try to do, and, and I'm I'm kind of a friendly guy. I, li I like saying hi to people, and and I also like practicing Thai, so. Um, and then um, usually, usually foreigners come to Thailand and they learn two words, um, Sawadi so Kap and Kopkun Kap. Yeah. Um, and so, um, and usually foreigners don't um, can't really pronounce them really well because they, um, it, it, it's really hard to hear exactly what Thai people are saying. Yeah. But, um, but I keep thinking, okay, well, um, probably 80% of the foreigners out there know Sawadi so Kap means Thai. So whenever I see a foreigner, I always say Sawadi so Kap. Um, like, like, like saying hello, Swati Cop. Yeah. And so, so I've said, um, I've said Swati Cop to probably hundreds of um, foreigners here, and every single time they just like, um, like walk, uh, walk away. Like what? Uh, and, and so, so I don't know. I'm, I, I maybe I'm kind of funny looking or whatever. But, but you're uh, the significant thing about you is you're the very first foreigner that I waved and said Swati Cop, um, and. You said, uh, you, uh, you said back to me, "Hey, it's a wadi cop." Yeah. Um. So, so, um. So that's um. That was really, really interesting. So, so why are you not afraid of um, speaking Thai? Well, uh, my Thai is my Thai should be a lot better. Let, let's get one thing straight. It should be a lot better. I should not. My Thai is actually worse in Thailand than it was in the UK. Uh, but it should be a lot better. But no, it's just I say Swadi Cap a lot because I speak to a lot of Thais, I work with a lot of Thais. And it's, you know, it's polite. You know, it, the Thai language based on politeness. So, Cap or Car for the lady, that is basically, it's not saying please, but it's being polite. It means you're speaking well. So, to me, Swadi Cap is okay. The only unusual thing about with, with you when you did Swadi Cap is that you did it like, like with an English version, so you're like, <laughs> like, hello, but you went swaddy cap, because normally you should go swaddy cap. So I'm you, normally when I say it, I say swaddy cap, and I don't know when I met you, probably I didn't do that to you, but it was funny because you went swaddy cap, like that, and I thought, okay, because the ties all. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, um, so, so, yeah. I, I, um, I definitely, I definitely do it, do it wrong by, yeah. by, by waving. Oh, and and part of, um, part of waving is because uh, Thai people, Thai people never wave, especially like a, like a over your hand wave. No. Um, and so, uh, so, so, it, it, um, so I really like waving at Thai people because, uh, because a lot of, Thai, well, I, I, I don't know, may, uh, maybe it's just in my head, but I think that they want, uh, like they want to interact with foreigners and they want to talk to foreigners more. So, um, so a lot of times I'll wave. So, yeah. um, so Wadi Cop, and um, Thai people will like wave, wave back like, uh, like uh, like this. So, so, so yeah. for me it's just really, really funny. Yeah. Like, um, because um, they well, well, uh, like, like like Thai, you'll never see a Thai person like put their arms. Well, up I've like got this. to say, Thais really appreciate when you make the effort to speak Thai. They really appreciate it. Because I mean, don't get me wrong, it it can be difficult sometimes. So with my girlfriend, I'll try and practice Thai, but she'll like. You know, so I'll just practice a conversation. So you mm -hmm. know, we'll start the conversation. You know, Swadi Cap, Swadi Car, you know, Sabadi My Cap, Sabai Day, Benadai Cap, or My Sabai. And she'll go in English, what is wrong? I'm like, no, no, nothing's wrong. <laughs> I, I tried to practice. <laughs> then the other like, oh, forget it. I'm not practice with you anymore. Yeah. Cool. So, um, so um, can, you, um, can you talk about how, how you learn time? Yeah, well, what it was, I, I'd had a previous Thai partner mm -hmm. before before my girlfriend Ning, so uh, it was just a New Year's resolution. I wanted to learn another language. And, uh, and this was in England or in this in England, yeah. So I, I went. I at the turn of the decade, I was in lived in Singapore for three years, mm -hmm. uh, and then I went back to UK for work. So it was just one New Year's resolution. I thought, okay, I want to learn another language. Now most people would pick Spanish or something, you know, and a bit easier. And I went, well, I go to Thailand a lot. I've got a Thai girlfriend. I should learn Thai, but also I'm in England, so I was like, hmm. So I found I found a Thai teacher on a website uh, near where I live. 
uh, where I was based in England. I met her. She was married to a, an English guy. Well, he's uh-huh. Scot- technically he's Scottish, sorry, but he was a British guy. Mm-hmm. And uh, her English was very good. She had a degree in English, and she said, "Well, I think I can teach you. What do you think?" I said, "Well, I, I'm happy to do. Uh, we'll see how it goes. If it don't work, it doesn't work. Mm-hmm. But if it works, then we'll carry on." And also, my then girlfriend at the time, she used to come to the UK for. T- okay, and. Uh- um, I don't. Uh, I don't remember where we were in the story when uh, when when my, okay, when yeah, my camera so, cut off. But uh, so, but, uh, but but you had a uh, you had a Thai girlfriend. You you met a you met a Thai yeah, yeah. Uh, Thai so, teacher. And so the Thai teacher. Uh, I used to do two three hours a week. But before I was coming to Thailand, I'd ramp it up to four five hours a week, about two three weeks before, so I could mm-hmm. really get my Thai going. Uh, but like I say, I, my partner at the time, she come to the UK three or four, for three four months a year, and they become quite close. And to this day, even though we're not together, they're still friends. We're all still friends. We all still message each other on Facebook and things like that. Uh, but uh, she, my Thai teacher, worked out. She was really good. Uh, she was very strict with me. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, a few times she'd do that to me. Steve, learn properly, you know, <laughs> hit me in the head. But uh, but the way she. As you know with Thai, it's Sanskrit, so it's, unless you study really hard, it's it's virtually, for the likes of me and you, you study the Western alphabet, it's, mm-hmm. very, it's virtually impossible to read. Uh, so when when you're trying to study it, you need a phonetic way mm-hmm. of it speaking Thai. She was very good with that. She, so like you mentioned about lab, the way she would spell it, A-R-B, she was very good. So even like swaddy crap, it would be spelt, you know, in a certain way. But Thai is a tonal language, so there's five tones in Thai, the way you say it. So you can say the same word in, in Thai, like da, you know. So the perfect example is, is ma, me, is, is like mama, ma, it's like mama, but me, is a dog. Mm-hmm. So if you get the wrong tone, you could be calling someone's mother the dog, which is obviously very rude. <laughs> so you have five tones, and she was very good, she'd write the word, same word. But she'd have a little symbol for the tone, so a mm-hmm. tick would mean this tone, a cross would mean this tone. So she had a really good teaching method. Uh, so and I miss it a bit. If she was in Thailand, if she was based in Thailand or based in Bangkok, I'd go back to her and, and use her again. But she was very good, and people have complimented me on my Thai, even though I don't speak Thai much and I don't have a big vocabulary. They have said when I speak Thai, uh, it's it's quite clear. So and that's all down to her teaching, which is pretty good. Cool. cool, cool. And so, um, w- well, uh, my uh, my experience actually, like my first three Thai teachers that, li- like, I uh, I met, did a like hour lesson with them, and then after afterwards, I was just so frustrated, and um, and uh, it, um, it was uh, it wasn't a it wasn't a great uh, um, experience for me, um, and so. Um, and, and and for me, I'm um, like the tones are really hard for me. Like yeah. I, I I know a lot I know a lot about the tones, but I still can't really hear them. Yeah, that, it's the most difficult thing about learning yeah. Thai because you can learn words. You know, you can learn words and you can put the sentences together. That that it's the tone that's the hard part in Thai. And yeah. it is what when people it is what people concentrate on because Thai is not a big language. There's about three thousand words in the Thai language because mm-hmm. of the tones. So learn the words, you would think. If you concentrated and study, would not be that difficult. Mm-hmm. It's the tones that is difficult. Yeah, so it's the hardest part. Oh, and so um, and um, and so for me, um, like one of the thing, um, one of the teachers, um, she said, "Oh, hey, your, um, tones are your weak part. Let's um, let's let's focus on your weak part." And so, um, uh, like my my philosophy in 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 learning and teaching is figure out what you're good at and then do more of it. And like eventually, you have to do the stuff you're bad at, but um, but 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 then especially for keeping motivated, if if you're only like working on stuff that you're really bad at, um, your motivation goes like really yeah, low, really, 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 really low. I, so um, so so, so anyway, that. that's um, that was my experience with yeah, my first I'll couple agree teachers. Yeah, that. agree with that. Um, and so so I'm kind of wondering what uh, what she did that kept your motivation really high, and um, and and ha- um, how did she um, like, like what what made her such a great teacher? Well, basically, it was like you know. I, she listened to what I wanted to learn, so I said, look, I know Swanty Cap and I know this, but I want to, I go on holiday in Thailand, but I want to work in Thailand, so I need to know this, so she, she, she would teach me how to, like, say, I work in computers, but it just, 
I want a, I want it to conversion type. So even things like, you know, Gan Weird and things like that, which is your birthday. Mm -hmm. But I'm very, and I always say, to, people say to me, what do I need to learn? I say, the first thing you need to learn after a swaddy cap, cotton cap, is the numbers. So once you learn the numbers, then you can get in a taxi, you can go into a tight shop, you understand how much they're going to charge you. You can barter with them, because barter, especially in the market, is a big thing. Nothing ever has a price on in Thailand unless you go to 7-Eleven or Family Mart. Any other <laughs> shop hardly ever has a price on it. So, you know, they expect to barter, but if you don't know the numbers, you cannot barter unless they speak English. Mm -hmm. So, I, I tell you now, when it comes to buying things, if you can speak a bit of Thai numbers, like Nung Roy, Nung Pan, which is like 100, 1000, if you can speak these, you know, it helps. And even just things like Tower I, Cap, which is how much, mm -hmm. or Gi Bat, which means how much, but that means very little. If you know these words, they, all of a sudden you're in a good bargaining position to buy things. Huh. So, um, so, so that's really cool. So you would, um, you, you would have an idea of saying, oh, well, I, I'd want to say this, and then you'd ask the teacher, and yes. she would, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and, and then she'd focus on, on, yes, the, on exactly. those, she, um, the, uh, those she, phrases that you she, she really wanted to say. She didn't, she didn't force what she thought I should learn. She listened to me, and I, I said, here's what I want out of it. I said, but I want to make, I want to speak it pro properly. You know, I want, you know, so I want to like learn the real sentences and everything else. To be fair, I've regressed a little bit because I don't use them enough. Mm -hmm. But like, you know, so things like uh, people say about your, you know, ask your name, country where I can, what is your name? The actual type for it, and I can't remember it unfortunately. But she learned me the proper business way. Right? It's something like Q Chun. Something like that it was, I can't remember, uh -huh. I'd have to look it up again. But because I do business in Thailand and I work in a professional office, that is the actual correct way to do it. Mm -hmm. Most Thais not care. Like we don't care in English if you use, <laughs> use the Oxford Dictionary English, as long as you can talk to me, it's okay. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to learn it properly in case I had to go for a job interview, introduce myself properly do a bit of business in Thailand. I wanted to make sure that the Thais, I, I, I respected them and I respected their language and I, I tried to talk as well as, as well as I possibly could. Cool, that's, um, that's, that's sure. awesome and that's, um, that's, um, that's just really cool because a lot of, um, a lot of people have the experience where they, yeah. uh, uh, where, where they learn a couple I, I, words that then get embarrassed and yeah. then... Well, I think, I think it's very, I think the way she did it, she listened to what I wanted Mm -hmm. I know another guy who I, I knew come to Thailand, his time was pretty good, but his tones weren't good. So he used to go to it, but he said to it, it's the tone, you have to teach me the tone, the words, I'm okay. <laughs> so he'd literally sit there for two hours doing the tones, going da, 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 da. He'd like, like we uh -huh. call like an optic scale. <laughs> but she listened to him and taught him that way. So the way, what he wanted, why I wanted was basically completely two different things. I wanted mm -hmm. to learn the words, he wanted to, he wanted to get on the tones a bit more. But she she basically put it together for what we wanted. I feel when you go to the probably some of the Thai learning here, they just have a syllabus and you learn that. Mm -hmm. And whether it's good for you or not, it's okay. So it's like, you know, we have what we call bar Thai. So it's like the tourists who just go to bars and want to speak in bars and speak to the girls in bars and bar Thai. And people look down on that but I'm like, well if that's what they want to do, it's okay. Sorry, sorry, Joseph. We're very good friends. Just go oh, ahead. Oh, oh, okay. And we can. Um, you, you want to pause? You want to pause? Just for, pause. Uh, so okay. Okay. Well. Okay. Okay. So, um, so, so you had a customer um, come in, um, yeah. said, um, said hi, and um, and and I really like um, I really like what you're saying about your your teacher like customized for for yeah. each person, and then and then for um, for me I'd be on the like total other uh, other end of the three point spectrum of. Yeah. Because um, I'm a really visual learner, so I um, learning the writing system is yeah. is really important for me. So um, so for me and and um, um, so for me, I would be like totally um, totally different yeah. on on that way. Well, I found speaking it uh, for me. I want to speak speak before I can write it. Uh -huh. Writing is writing. <sighs> Reading it would help. Nitnoy, mug stuff. Nitnoy is small and tight, but you know. <laughs> uh, 
No, it, 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 it helps a little bit sometimes. Uh-huh. The only time it helped me is that when you deal with the government, it is in type, so uh-huh. I don't really understand it. But even the government now are doing most in English as well. Mm-hmm. So, um, so you're from you're from Liverpool, right? I am from Liverpool, yes. Oh, and actually, uh, when when I was talking to when I was talking to some of the customers about um, about about doing the interview with you, they um, they were trying to get me to let, or, or they they said, hey, hey, um, tomorrow when you do the interview, then say say this to Steve, and then he's going to say this, which which is something that um, do, you, do you know what they're uh, like, like rubbing your belly and saying something about your heart or. Um, um, I think it's something like the Liverpool football team that says with... Um, d- does any of that ring a bell or...? No, it doesn't, unfortunately. <laughs> it doesn't, no. Okay, and, and I don't know if they were, like, um, 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 like, like joking or, or if... Um, they probably, God, were, they probably yeah. were joking, but it, it, it would be all in good fun. So, so you're, you're from Liverpool, and, yeah. and Liverpool is your favourite football team? It, it is, yes. I'm a big Liverpool fan. It was probably when I moved to Asia initially... Uh, this sounds terrible. I should say my family should have been the main concern and everything else. But my main concern about moving to Asia was would I get to see watch Liverpool? Uh-huh. Now on the TV uh, they show every game, so that's fantastic. Uh, but I used to go to Liverpool regularly. I used to. I was just, still am a season ticket holder, and I'm a oh, I'm a shareholder in Liverpool Football Club. I've been, I've travelled all over the world to watch them. Uh, so. And I, it, 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 very close to my heart, but now I I live too far away to go and see them much. But when I went to the UK this year, I was lucky enough to go back and see two games at Anfield, which I really really enjoyed. And Liverpool won both of them too, so I really really enjoyed that. Oh, that's um, that's awesome. And um, and so so um, you were uh, you were telling me about how when you speak. And to your friends back in Liverpool, then your speech is a little bit faster. Uh, oh, which, yeah, I mean, uh, we're, we're quick talkers in Liverpool. Uh, I've probably talked a bit quick, quicker than normal even on, on this uh, this interview. But no, we're quick talkers, so even though my girlfriend, their comprehension of English is pretty good, when I'm speaking to my mother or my sister or one of the children, it's da 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 she's just like... Don't know. I, I <laughs> absolutely nothing. And uh, and can you can you give a can you give an example of that? That uh, that's a really hard thing to like get on the spot and like pretend like you're talking to your mother. But um... well, it's just things like you know. I mean, just said things. How are you today? Yeah, everything all right. What about that? And, you know, we'd have what we call some scout slang. Like so, like you know, my sister be like, oh, I bought some new traps today. Traps are like trainers. Okay. Uh, so no one, anyone outside Liverpool would really know that. We say. Sound for okay. Mm-hmm. How are you feeling? I'm sound. Everything, everything sound. So that's like okay. And instead of saying goodbye, we say ta da. Ta da? Ta da. T A R A. Ta da. Oh, ta da. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. So, like, I, I remember the uh, one Thai guy, and I'm speaking to my mother. I was in a bar in Koh Samui because I lived in Koh Samui for one year. So I was speaking to my mum, and uh, at the end of it, got, yeah. Ta-da. Next day I speak to my mum, same guy in the bar, ta-da. It happened for three days and he goes, how come you, you speak to your mum like a magician? And I went, what do you mean like a magician? He said, well, at the end it's like every time just before you put the phone down you go, ta-da. I went, no, I say, ta-da. It, 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 ta-da means goodbye. It's Liverpool people use it to say goodbye. So, so it's just different. We just, we just speak we speak English, but it's just really quickly with some colloquialism, some slang in there. But in England, lots of people, different, Newcastle have their own accent and different things. So they say why I for OK and things like that. So the Scottish, like uh, Andy, who you meet in here, he's Scottish. Mm-hmm. He says different things to me sometimes. Like, you know, it's, 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 it, the UK is very much like that. It has different means for different words. Oh, and I, um, I, I, I had a question because my, um, my, my family is from Durham County. Yeah. Um, my, uh, my mom lives in the U.S. now. My uncle, my, my uncle and and aunt are still in um, in, in, in England. Well, Durham's, Durham's right next to Newcastle. Very close to it. Um, and so, and so, my uh, my question, which which I actually asked my uncle on Facebook, but I I don't know if he like uses Facebook very often. 
or knows how to read messages. Yeah. Um, but uh, but but I asked him, hey, which uh, which which team which team do you like, and then which team is the cl- which football team is the closest football team to Durham County? Um, yeah. So um, so um, and then I asked, um, and he didn't respond. And then I asked my mom that, and she said, oh, I I, I hate sports. Well, um, the, the two <laughs> the two, and, um, two big so, teams in that region are Newcastle and Sunderland. Sunderland's the closer because half of Sunderland's in County Durham. Oh, okay. So they they are the closest team, but it's probably there's a lot of Newcastle fans there. It's quite close. So, so, um, so, so you're guessing my uncle likes Newcastle? He could like Newcastle or Sunderland. Te- okay. Sunderland is technically the closer team. And and they're in the same league as Liverpool. Newcastle are Sunderland are Sunderland doing really bad at the moment. Oh, okay. Yeah, they they two division staff. They they're not having a good time. Uh-huh. Newcastle are in the are in the Premier League. But they're, they're great rivals, Newcastle and Sunderland. They don't like each other at all. Uh-huh. That, that's what happens today. The club football teams are together, the less you like them. Uh-huh. So. Okay, and... Um, oh, can you um, can you talk about getting a taxi in Thailand? Because um, um, taxis are really, really different. Like, like, taxis on this street are generally, like, regular taxis that aren't looking to... Uh, if, but, yeah, very rare that happens here because we're outside the yeah. sheds a little bit. Yeah, uh, but 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 you go to Sukhumvit and pretty much all the taxis there are trying to overcharge the tourists. Yeah, well, um, so so can, um, can you kind of talk about that, like 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 regular taxis versus the taxis that are like, hey hey, where you go, where you well, go? Well, in Sukhumvit you can't. There, there's a great little app. Uh, I don't know whether it's available on iPhone, but there's a, a great little app called basically Thai Light, and uh, it gives you all the uh, normal everyday phrases and if you buy the pro version which is only about 500 baht uh-huh. it actually says it so you can even get in a taxi and it'll even say put the meter on if you can't say it in Thai you can go he'll understand it but unfortunately in chunk of it they can really dig their heels in they can really dig their heels in so it's about negotiation at that point all I'd say to people if you don't like being ripped off the best thing to do is download an application called Grab. So Grab is like Uber in Asia. And if you put Grab in there, you order the taxi, you put in where you're going and where you go, where, where, where you start from, mm-hmm. your location. And then it'll come with a driver, he'll pick you up, he'll have his car registration, his picture, his name. So very, very, very similar to Uber. And that will give you the price then. Now Grab tends to be a little bit more expensive than a taxi meter. But at least you know what you're paying. Uh-huh. So I always recommend to use Grab, but obviously you need to know where you are and where you're going. Uh, so I, I'd recommend it highly everyone download Grab. But getting in the taxi generally is okay. As soon as they see you're the tourist, yeah, they want to put them. They, they, they'll try and negotiate. And, and in the tourist area, so not far from here, we have the Ratchet to Train Market. Mm-hmm. The taxi's there and the tourist for overcharging. And the tourist for it. So I would say mainly if you can use the public transport as much as you can. It's very good. It's very clean. It's very cheap. Uh, and plus it's quicker. Bangkok, very traffic heavy. Very traffic heavy. You know, sometimes for even going five kilometres can take you one hour thirty minutes if the traffic's bad. So I always recommend using the MRT and the SkyTrain if you can. But yeah, but the taxis, yeah, round round the tourist areas, it's a case of negotiation. But there's no, they don't have any etiquette here rules. So if the guy at the front wants 200 baht, go to the guy right at the back and say, I'll give you 100 baht. Nine times out of 10, he'll take it. Otherwise, he has to wait another 30 minutes beforehand. <laughs> so, so there's little tricks you can do. But huh. g- generally, if you're outside the sunk of it, you flag on the streets. Generally, they'll put the meter on. There's too much hassle. A lot of, tight ta- a lot of the taxi drivers in Bangkok, they, they have no English. So it's too much hassle, generally trying to not put the meter on and say uh-huh. how much, yeah. Okay, and ha- have you ever had a bad experience in, with a taxi in, in Thailand? Uh, no, I've not had a bad experience. I've had some where they've took me the wrong place and we've had a you know, language situation uh-huh. or anything else. Uh, but generally, no, I've, no, I've been okay. I've certainly and never had a never had any physical altercations or any problems with money or anything else with them. And I had, um, I, um, most of my experiences have been really, really good. I've had a couple taxi drivers like try to over overcharge me. Um, one, uh, one guy though, um, he, 
um, I was uh, we were driving home from the airport and I was halfway home and you, um, usually um, usually a taxi ride ha- um, usually a taxi ride to my house from the airport is like 250 baht yeah so we're, we were only halfway there and the meter was already 400 baht um, so that, that I've never yeah. experienced oh, oh yeah and so so I um, so, so I said um, I said hey hey um, can you pull over the meters really bad um, I need to get out and he's like oh oh oh, oh sorry 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 um, um, how much do you usually charge how, how much how much do how much do do taxis usually take from the airport and I told him like oh like 250 baht so he turned off the meter and he said, "Okay, you just just pay me two hundred fifty bucks." Well, that, that, maybe it was so, a genuine mistake then. Well, I always recommend from the airport. I always take Grab for two reasons: one, they are a little bit more expensive, but you know what mm-hmm. you're paying. But two, in the airport, if you ever arrive at Swanapool, you have to go down basically four floors to get the taxi, mm-hmm. and the taxis there are okay because they, you know, basically you go to the machine and you know what you have to pay. Uh-huh. It's okay. But with Grab, as soon as you come out. Because it's a car, they'll pick you up at the departure gate, so you don't have to go all the way down the stairs and everything. Uh, and, and and then um, actually, that's one of my questions: is where um, because I haven't ever taken Grab at the airport, um, and and I uh, maybe it's because I'm not not looking for the signs, but but can you tell me where where you get Grab at the Salon no, you Airport? No, use your phone. So basically, oh, 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 I'm, just I'm, use I'm sorry, sorry. I mean, like like where where in the airport you? Because um, the airport has like five levels and. Well, basically, you just say. It'll come up when you type Swanapool into Grab. It'll come up with all all the things, and it'll come up with all the departure. Oh, okay, okay. So, um, so, so, so you, you can just pick, say you can pick, like departure. Yeah, you go to departure door three, am I? Okay, and they'll know where to stop. Ah, uh, uh, okay, okay, okay. So, so, so then you just um, it has all the departure doors. Yeah, and then you can, okay. all the, And when you go into Swanapool, it has all the arrival doors as well. Uh-huh. Yeah. Cool. Cool. So that's um, that's really interesting. Thanks uh, thanks for teaching me something new about yeah. Grab. Um, so anything else um, anything else you want to talk about for the interview? Uh, no, it's, it's your interview to be honest with you, Joseph. So I'm here to answer whatever questions you've got. Uh, no, just uh, uh, no happy happy. Thanks for taking the time and helping us promote the bar. All oh, promotions, good promotion. Uh, no, I, I've, I've been happy to talk to you. Cool. Well, it's um, it's been really nice. Thanks. It, it, um, it's been a great interview, and and, okay. and I especially like how you um, how you give like Thai examples because because um, a lot of my friends back uh, ba- back home, I think they have like a mild interest for uh, for learning Thai, and so so you, I, I think you gave about like twenty or thirty different Thai words yes. uh, with uh, with, uh, with, the, with the explanation of what it is. So I um, I like your Thai teaching style too. Okay. I don't know much Thai, though. <laughs> but I, I don't think I'll be taking it up as a career anytime soon. <laughs> Cool. Well, uh, thanks. Uh, thanks very much. And uh, this this was a great interview. So thank you. Okay. Thank you, Joseph.